In this video, we review and deploy Azure Private Link Service. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and welcome to my channel. Private Link is a way to keep traffic for PaaS services on the Azure network and off the public internet. But what if we want to use Private Link for server-based applications? Coming up, we're going to review how to do that with Private Link Service. Before that, please like, subscribe, and share with a friend. Click the bell icon for notifications of new content and check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365 and Intune Management, and Hybrid Identities with Windows AD and Enter ID. The links are below. And thank you, channel members. Your support is appreciated. Back to it. To be honest, it took me some time to understand what exactly the Private Link service is and how it would be used in an organization. To make sense of it, we need to review some Azure private networking concepts. First is a private endpoint. This is a virtual network interface that connects a PaaS service to a customer's virtual network. Once connected, we can access that service by its private IP on our private network. Take a storage account, for example. We can create a storage private endpoint attached to our virtual network and use that instead of the public endpoint to connect to the storage account. It becomes a private resource not available over the internet. Next is a private link. The private link is a connection between the private endpoint and the PaaS service. The private link traffic goes over the Microsoft backbone network, never over the internet. What then is a private link service? A private link service is a reference to a service hosted on a private network. It provides a way to host IaaS-based services such as a web application and allow connectivity over a private link. This is a great option if you have a service that you want to make available to clients or customers that should not be available over the internet. The client isn't required to create a VPN connection to the service to keep it private. Private link service connects to a standard load balancer. Clients can then connect to the private link service from a private endpoint in their own Azure network. You may be thinking, big deal, clients can just connect to the load balancer's private IP. Why would we need a private link service? Here's the advantage to the private link service. Clients can connect to it from other VNets without peering. We don't need to create a peering relationship between the client and the server virtual network. We simply put a private endpoint in the client virtual network and point it to the private link service. Also, clients can connect to a private link service from virtual networks and other tenants without peering or a VPN connection. The client just deploys a private endpoint and registers it with a private link service. Once the connection is approved, they can access the service without any additional network configuration. All traffic between the private endpoint and the private link service goes over the Microsoft network, never over the internet. And if there's connectivity from on-premises networks with Express Route or VPN, connected clients can access the private link service as well. There are some things to be aware of. Private link service is only supported on Azure standard load balancers, not basic. And the load balancer only supports virtual machines and VM scale sets. Only a NIC-based backend pool is supported with the private link service. IP-based backend pools are not supported. The private link service uses a globally unique name called an alias. The alias is generated for each private link service instance. It's similar to a DNS name and can be shared with clients or customers to create a private endpoint that connects to the service. The alias consists of the service name as a prefix, a GUID that makes the name globally unique, and the suffix region.azure.privatelinkservice. Next, let's go over private link service visibility. With this, we can limit who can see the private link service. The first option is with RBAC roles. This is only available inside a tenant. We can limit who sees the service with RBAC roles. We can restrict by known subscriptions. We can set a predefined list of subscriptions from within or outside our tenant. We can also pre-approve these subscriptions. And then we can let anyone with the alias request a connection. The connection needs to be approved before it's connected. The security is related to visibility. Any client with the alias can request a connection, even with the RBAC option. We're going to jump in the demo in a minute. Before we do that, let's review the lab. There's one tenant with a standard load balancer that has a web server in the backend pool. It's an internal load balancer. There's no public access. This is the target tenant that hosts the private link service. There's a second tenant with a client. There's no peering or VNet connectivity between the two VNets. Coming up, we're going to add a private link service to the standard load balancer. Next, we'll add a private endpoint in the client tenant and connect it to the private link service. Finally, we'll test to verify the client can access the web page over the private link. Let's jump into the portal and get started. Here we are on a computer in the target tenant. 
This demo has a server hosting a default IIS web page. Nothing fancy, this video is about connectivity, not web apps. There's a load balancer in front of that server. Let's take a look. It's an internal load balancer. There's no public IPs and it's using the standard SKU. We can see the front end configuration. We have an IP address of 10.10.20.5 and we have a backend pool. Let's take a look at the backend pool. Notice the backend pool configuration is by the network interface card or NIC. Using an IP address isn't supported with the private link service. We can open a page from the load balancer by going to that front end IP address. That IP was 10.10.20.5. There it is. And like I said, it's a simple default web page. That shows that the load balancer works. You want to make sure the load balancer works before we deploy the private link service. Because if the load balancer isn't configured correctly, the private link service isn't going to work. Let's deploy that private link service next. We'll go back to the portal and search for private link. From the private link center, we can view private endpoints private links and some other private resources. Let's go to private link services and click create to create a private link service. Make sure your subscription and resource group are correct. Give the private link service a name and select the region. Make sure it's the same region as your load balancer. Next, go to outbound settings. We'll select the standard load balancer. If you don't see your load balancer, make sure it's using the standard SKU and not the basic load balancer. And be sure you selected the same region. We'll select the front end IP to associate to it. The source NAT virtual network is already selected. That's the same as the load balancer. Next, select the source NAT subnet. The private link service performs destination NATing to prevent IP conflicts between the client or customer side and the service provider or the target network. Leave enable TCP proxy v2 set to no. Unless you're using TCP proxy v2, then you can set it to yes. We can set the private IP address settings to dynamic or static. We can also add additional. Add additional private NAT IP addresses if expecting high volumes of traffic. This example will stick with one. We'll go next to access security. Next, we have visibility for the service. This determines who can request access for the private link service. Use role-based if the client or customer is in a different VNet but on the same tenant. With role-based access control, visibility is limited by RBAC roles. With restricted by subscription, any user who has access to a subnet we define or we add here will be able to request a connection. And the last option, anyone with an alias, anybody who has the alias for this private link service, will be able to request a connection. We could also add their subscription for auto approval. Let's stick to role-based access control for this. Next, we'll go to tags, add tags as needed, and then review and create. Once validation passes, we'll click create. This will take a minute to finish. I'll pause here and come back once it's done. That finished, let's go to private links next. And from here, we'll go into private link services. And there's our private link. Let's open that. In the overview page, we have some useful information. The alias is the globally unique name for the service. It's a prefix, then a GUID, and then a suffix. This is what the client private endpoint uses to connect to the private link service target. We also have private endpoint connections under settings. There's none there so far. We can view and modify the NAT configuration. We could change enable TCP proxy v2 or add additional IP addresses if needed. We can also modify access security. And if we go to properties, that has more information about the service, including the alias again. Now that we've created our private link service, let's create a private endpoint to connect to it next. Okay, let's create our private endpoint next. This is on another subnet that our client will use to connect. 
This is the step a client or customer has to take to access the private link service target from their virtual network. And we're doing this from a different tenant. There's no peering or VNets between the target and the client VNet. The environment we're working in now is totally separate from the other one. From the private link center, let's go to private endpoints. And we'll create a private endpoint. Select the subscription and a resource group. Give it a name, privlink client for this example. The private endpoint has to be in the same region as the client VNet, not the private link region, the region of the VNet that will access the private link service. This example, the VNet is in East US 2. Let's go to resource. Next, we have to specify the target. If we were on the same tenant, we could select the subscription. It could be a different subscription within the tenant, and we would select the resource type Microsoft.network forward slash private link services, and then select the private link. However, this client is not in the same tenant. In this case, we'd use the option to connect by a resource ID or alias. Then we provide the alias for the private link service, and then we can add a request message. Once that's done, we'll go next to Virtual Networks. Select the virtual network and the subnet to put the private endpoint. We don't need an application security group. Let's click next to DNS. This example doesn't use private DNS, so we'll leave this as default, not integrated with a private DNS zone. Next to tags, add tags as needed and go to review and create. And once validation passes, we'll create. We'll give it a minute to finish. That finished, let's go to the resource. Here we are at the private endpoint we just created. And the first thing to notice is the connection status is set to pending. Let's go to the DNS configuration. Make a note of the IP address. We're not addressing DNS in this video, but you could add a host with this IP address in your private resolver. Next, let's go back to the private link service on the target tenant. This is the tenant with the load balancer. Here we are at the private link service on the target tenant. Let's go to private endpoint connections. And here's the connection attempt on the target. It shows the connection status is pending. So if we select, we can approve that. We'll add a message. Now if we refresh, it shows approved. And if we go back to the private endpoint on the client tenant, here's the private endpoint on the client tenant and it shows approved. Now that we have that approved, we can test the connection. To do that, we've logged into a test VM on the client subnet. Again, this is a different tenant. There's no VNet peering or VPNs between the client and the target subnet. Let's take a look at the IP configuration. This machine is on the same subnet as the private endpoint, not the load balancer or private link service. Now, because we didn't configure DNS, I'm gonna go straight to the IP address of the private endpoint that we just deployed. And there it is, we can access a web page behind a private load balancer in a different tenant. There's no VNet peering or VPNs between the client and the target VNet, and this web page isn't exposed to the internet. This is all private IP addresses. That is how to configure the Azure Private Link Service. I hope that helps you better understand the Azure Private Link Service. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.